Patrick Murphy served as an Army captain in the 82nd Airborne Division in Iraq. He was awarded the Bronze Star. He's also been a professor at West Point, a criminal prosecutor, and in 2006, he was the first veteran of the Iraq War to be elected to Congress. In his first month in office, Congressman Murphy introduced the Iraq War De-Escalation Act to responsibly withdraw troops from Iraq on a timeline. He introduced that legislation alongside a young Democratic senator with the hard-to-remember name of... Barack Obama. Now in his second term in Congress, Congressman Murphy has just announced that he is taking on lead sponsorship of a bill that President Barack Obama says he would sign if it gets to his desk. It's legislation that would repeal Don't Ask, Don't Tell. The policy is not working for armed services and it hurts our national security. President Barack Obama has stated that if Congress get a bill to his desk repealing Don't Ask, Don't Tell, he will sign it into law. It is now our job, and my job specifically, to quarterback this to the Congress of the United States to do just that. President Obama has, of course, been emphatic and consistent in his statements that he is opposed to Don't Ask, Don't Tell, that he thinks that openly gay men and women should be allowed to serve in the U.S. military. What's been in question to those who share the president's views on the issue is the sense of urgency that he has about getting the repeal done. Well, as of now, getting it done in Congress is the job for which Patrick Murphy has decided to volunteer. Joining us now is Iraq War veteran Congressman Patrick Murphy. Thanks very much for joining us tonight, sir. Thanks so much, Rachel, for having me. So as far as I know, you've got 151 co-sponsors so far. I'd, I'd love it for you to translate that number into how likely it is that this bill actually gets passed by the House this year. Well, we need 218 votes, Rachel, in the House of Representatives, and we actually just got one a couple hours ago, another uh, power trip from the 82nd Airborne Division, my fellow congressman just signed on. So we're making progress every day. I've been quarterbacking this, Rachel, as you mentioned, for about a week now, and we need to act with a sense of urgency to put this on the president's desk. Can I ask who your new sign-up is? Sure. It's uh, Joe Baca, one of the co-chairs of the uh, Hispanic uh, Caucus here in the House of Representatives. Excellent. Well, um, I mean, you're a, you're a veteran yourself, obviously, decorated with a bronze star. You're a married man. You're a blue dog Democrat. You represent Pennsylvania. You're conservative on a lot of fiscal issues. Why did you decide that you were the guy to take point on this issue? Why does this mean so much to you? Sure. I mean, Rachel, I, I served in the Army since 1993. And I saw some, and I served with some great soldiers who were kicked out of the Army, not because of any type of sexual misconduct, but just because of their sexual orientation, just because they were gay. This is a national security issue, Rachel. The fact that we've let go over 13,000 troops, that's over three and a half combat brigades. It doesn't make any sense. And now is the time to repeal it. we got to get it through the House and then the Senate, and we got to get the president to sign this. Well, the president does say that he wants to repeal the law. He has said that he looks forward to getting a bill from Congress. It, has the White House been helping you with your efforts? I know that you've been going around meeting people, other members of the House, face to face. You've been working personally really in, in difficult circumstances to try to move this bill. Are you getting direct support from the White House? Well, I think the President last week, his, his instructions to both uh, the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff and also the Secretary of Defense to say we look at the policy, really re look at the implementation of it. But really the issue is, Rachel, is this was an act of Congress that made Don't Ask, Don't Tell in the law. It will take an act of Congress to fix that mistake of 16 years ago. And it's our job as a Congress to get a backbone, to have the courage to get this passed. We can't punt this to the president. We can't punt this to the courts. It's our job. And it's my job to quarterback this. And we're going to make it happen. Well, when you go around and you meet with members of Congress on this, do the ones who are against this, who say that they're not going to support you on this, you can't count on their vote, do they make good arguments? When people are arguing against Don't Ask, Don't Tell here, do you, are you finding yourself in solid, intellectually rigorous debates about the merits of the policy? Well, I think that would be a stretch, to be honest with you, Rachel. <laughs> I, I think, you know, what's sometimes, frankly, disheartening, I mean, listen, I've only been here for two and a half years, but sometimes it's, they give the excuse, excuse of, well, I can't do it in my district, I'm in a tough district, and that's Republicans and Democrats. They'd be like, Murph, I'd love to be with you. But the fact is this. We have lost 13,000 troops. We're now losing about two per day. 
We need every able-bodied, qualified American to serve their country. I mean, our troops are stretched so thin in Iraq and in Afghanistan. And now is the time, because it's with national security, to change this wrongful policy. And I'm doing just that. But I will tell you, there are members, that, you know, we're up, as I mentioned, at, at 152 right now. But there are members on both sides of the aisle that say, Patrick, I'll, I'll vote for it. I just can't co-sponsor. But we're still pushing to hopefully get to that 218 mark that we know it's going to pass. Because I want to make sure that when it comes up for a vote, we pass things, pass this bill. Because we don't want to regress here. We want to move it forward. Well, let me let me ask you the hard procedural question here, though. Sure. It, until a repeal can get through Congress, and I hear your confidence that it can, d do you think it would be appropriate for the president to hit the pause button on kicking more people out of the military under this policy? While a repeal is considered, should he use his executive authority to say, let's put a halt to this and just stop implementing the policy, stop the witch hunt, stop the processes of kicking people out yep. while a repeal is under consideration? Well, I, I think there's a, there's a distinction here. You know, one thing, you know, I was critical of President Bush. I was respectful, respectful of the office, but I was critical of him. I think the one thing here is that we criti I criticized President Bush on his signing statements. We Congress passed a law, we, he signed and said, well, we're going to disregard what that Congress said. You don't want President Obama to do the same thing. And here, what you're looking at right now is you're saying you don't want president to say, well, just forget what the Congress did back 16 years ago and ignore them. You know, he honors a co-equal branch of government. And we need to do it as a Congress and put a bill on his desk. He has been very clear, Rachel, that he will sign it. He's been very clear to his Secretary of Defense and his Joint Chiefs now that he wants to make sure that they're looking at this, how we're going to implement a change in policy. It's our job now to act with a sense of urgency to make it happen. You know, we have the momentum of the American public. We have even a former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. We have General Colin Powell, who's come out and said, who is one of the authors of the Don't Ask, Don't Tell policy 16 years ago, who has said now, we need to reevaluate this. We need to look at it. I have the former superintendent of the U.S. Naval Academy that said we need to repeal the Don't Ask, Don't Tell. So listen, we have over 75% of the American public. It doesn't matter if you're in a conservative district or a liberal district. If you're an American, you should believe in equality. You should believe in that oath that we all take as an Army officer, that we take as a congressman, to support and defend the Constitution of the United States. And that Constitution guarantee, guarantees equality for everybody. No matter, and I tell you what, Rachel, you know, when you're in Baghdad in 138 degree heat, like I was exactly six years ago, when you're that guy's in your left or your right, or that uh, young woman's in your left and your right, the fact is you don't care what their sexual orientation is. You don't care what their race is, their religion is, their creed is. You care whether or not they can fire an M4 assault rifle, if they can kick down a door. That's what this is about. And that's why we need to repeal this, because now is the time to make it happen. I think you just demonstrated why you're the right guy to be leading this fight right now. Congressman Patrick Murphy, Iraq War veteran, taking the lead on the effort to reverse Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Good luck with your efforts. Thanks for your time. Keep us surprised, okay? Will do, Rachel. You're a great American. Thanks. Thank you.